very important that when you play, you get the brain activated because what we're dealing with is a, uh, a system in the body that has to do with our ability to communicate to others. You have to understand that the intelligence of a human being has to do with your ability to cope with life around you, but not life within you. In other words, you have the five senses. You have the receptors of the eye. You see, you hear to the auditory nerve. You taste, you feel, so forth, etc. But the point that is, the, when you're playing, you are using motor systems, not sensory. That indicates a completely different way of thinking. You cannot ask questions as a dominant factor at the time you're playing. You have to issue statements and be willing to make mistakes. I need always a storyteller of sound. I don't need an, 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 an analyst. If you want to analyze anything, you analyze the music itself for its emotional uh, musical content. But, but self-analysis, the old statement, paralysis by analysis, I think I'm the one that brought that to musical circles because I heard it from a uh, physiologist or many, 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 many years before most of you were born. And, uh, but it is a very valid statement, paralysis by analysis, which means simply that your brain is trying to ask questions. At the moment, it should be issuing statements. If it asks questions, that means it's sensory. It's gathering information through the lines, receptors that are bringing information inward. It is no longer stimulating the flow of electrons to the tissues that must function with the musical thoughts that must be expressed to your audience, which is what it should be. We're storytellers. Whether you're a second trumpet, a third in a group, doesn't matter, or solo, but you still are a storyteller with your aspect of whatever the complete story is going to be. And it's always from you to them. product of all inputs for your instrument is sound that comes out the bell. Being a human being, you always go by the sound that comes out the, in other words, you go by the end of end product, just catch your spoon. Then you describe how you do it. You know what I mean? I can't see it, so you'll have to hand it to me. <laughs> but, uh, do it with one hand, just, just pick it up. You'll never know how you do these things, you do them. The human body works on the study of products. In other words, what are you trying to accomplish? You want to put a step, uh, walk in that direction, walk. Don't go by this muscle and that muscle and the chain of command that permits the skeletal structure to move. But you do it by what you want to accomplish. If I want to drink a little water, scroll. I take a little drink and I don't go by the various phenomena because it's not just the deltoids. It's not this muscle or that muscle in the hand. It's, there are many changes all over the body to do what I just did. You leave the complexity alone and like the jungle child doing dances and flute, go to the product of music. Don't figure how you're going to do it. Let the people who are going into medicine study how you do it. stop a bad habit before they start or before they cause trouble. Uh, call attention to uh, the development of a good habit to replace it. If they start thinking of trying to correct something that's wrong, this is what you're up against. You've got, if your imagination is good, think of filing cabinets in the brain. You file a physical response to a stimuli. Like I, I was, when I was doing research, I, I took one boy and I, whenever he played a certain note, I had him raise his right leg. <laughs> well, pretty soon, he automatically raised his right leg. When he come to a note, he wasn't thinking of it anymore. It was just already getting into the filing cabinets as a conditioned reflex. That's what the terminology starts to become. You don't correct bad habits. 
you only fight them. When you correct them, you're thinking of them and you're fighting them and you don't really win, they don't get corrected. The fact that you're aware of them is simply renewing them while you're trying to get rid of them. Begin to substitute a new one to replace the old one. Don't keep calling attention to the old one. Instead, find what you think should be the right thing to do and start developing a new habit that is what you want them to do instead. And then also, bring in a mirror so that the reinforcement of the sense of sight immediately starts to come in and they can see themselves, they'll have watched you, they'll have watched other players, and they can begin to look at themselves and the learning through the eye is tremendously important. The, uh, you want the multiplicity of senses to where they reinforce each other. The learning process is enhanced, but instead of trying to correct an old habit, substitute a new one. Do not play a tuba or a trumpet or a trombone by the valves. They simply adjust the tube length of the instrument so the instrument can resonate the frequency that you send into the mouthpiece. In other words, all this does is amplify the tone, gives it color, gives it the amplification. Now, you should have always song in the brain when you play. This is one of the things that should you be developed this simply by playing for many, many years. It'll start to come by itself. But if you want to formalize it, you can get it when you're young and you have a much greater advantage over the others. And when you play, you should sing at the same time. So there's always two voices, one in the head. This becomes a mirror of your thought. This is not the important one. This is the important one. This goes down the seventh cranial nerve to the lip for reflex response to a specific stimuli from the brain, just like the learning from the with the, the vocal cords. So we want these to be the vocal cords of the two things. But we always need the message to come from the brain. This is an automatic response. You have to have song and wind. Wind is your fuel supply, just like gasoline, pedal and all, is the fuel supply to the automobile. In other words, if we, we wouldn't even need wind if we could substitute electricity. Uh, putting it in importance, I, I give 85% to the mentalization, 15% to the wind. In other words, we can't play by wind. We have to have song. Then the wind is used as a motor activity so the lip can vibrate. Without it, it can't vibrate. And of course, reeds be the, pretty much the same thing there. But uh, <coughs> this type of thinking is quite new. In other words, uh, I've been teaching it for quite a number of years, but I think it's getting around fairly common knowledge now, but it has to be handled in a very positive way so that the art form teaching is dominant over the mechanics of the instrument. I always put it, when you learn the music, you are learning the instrument. You shouldn't learn the instrument to learn to play music. You should learn the music, and in so doing, you are learning the instrument. In other words, I'm putting the priority into the art form rather than into the mechanics of the instrument, because it's the training of the brain. And this is the important factor. Mm -hmm.